Hello everyone. A warm welcome to you from SGT University. I am Dr. Rohit Punga from the Faculty of Dental Sciences and today I shall be discussing about the maxillary nerve block. The maxillary nerve or the V2 that is the second division of the fifth cranial nerve or the intermediate division of the trigeminal nerve is purely sensory in function and uh, the maxillary nerve gives innovation to all structures in and around the maxillary bone and as you can see in this uh, photograph that uh, the mid facial region including the skin of the mid facial regions the lower eyelid the side of the nose the upper lip the nasopharyngeal mucosa the maxillary sinus the soft and the hard palate the palatine tonsil the maxillary teeth and the periodontal tissues all are supplied by the maxillary nerve the maxillary nerve leaves the uh, endocranium through the foramen rotundum which is located in the greater wing of the sphenoid bone to enter the pterygopalatine fossa and after its entry into the pterygopalatine fossa uh, you can uh, find that uh, in the pterygopalatine fossa it basically uh, gives branches through the pterygopalatine ganglion which is lying in the pterygopalatine fossa so uh, this pterygopalatine ganglion further has uh, orbital branches nasal branches pterygoid branches palatal branches and the main course uh, of the nerve continues that is the main trunk of the nerve continues forward from the pterygopalatine fossa into the floor of the orbit and uh, further as it goes into the floor of the orbit it gets into the inferior orbital fissure through which it goes into the infraorbital canal and from the infraorbital canal during its course inside the infraorbital canal it keeps giving branches to the uh, middle superior the anterior superior alveolar nerves and also before it enters into the floor of the orbit that is through the pterygo palatine uh, the pterygo maxillary fissure itself there is one branch which comes laterally that is the posterior superior alveolar nerve this is one nerve which does not relay into the ganglion and traverses the posterior lateral aspect of the maxilla and divides into two branches one goes extraosseous and one goes intraosseous so uh, the pterygopalatine fossa basically it's a pyramidal space actually which is located between the pterygoid bone posteriorly and the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone anteromedially and the maxilla anteriorly it opens laterally into this uh, infratemporal fossa through the uh, fissure and superiorly through the middle part of the inferior orbital fissure it in enters into the orbital apex so that is where the uh, main trunk of the maxillary nerve goes now this main trunk uh, goes into the infraorbital canal as i said and then it finally exits onto the anterior surface of the maxilla as the uh, infraorbital nerve also if we see the uh, connections of the or the relations of the pterygopalatine ganglion you will find that posterior medially it communicates with the foramen lacerum with the uh, vidian canal and uh, medially it is communicating with the nasopharynx with the uh, palatovaginal canal and in fero medially it is uh, with the oral cavity through the palatine foramen and medially with the nasal cavity through the sphenopalatine foramen so these are the important uh, relations of this uh, nerve through the pterygopalatine ganglion where on it is going to give the supply so let's now go ahead and uh, understand the different uh, important uh, things in the maxillary nerve block which is basically used for the uh, blockage of the entire maxillary nerve and provides anesthesia to the entire maxillary nerve in all its distribution and branches and this region that is the pterygopalatine fissure is an access to the pterygopalatine ganglion that we have for our injection so our target is basically to reach the needle in this site this is the target area of the pterygopalatine uh, ganglionic block or the maxillary nerve block so we want to block the nerve here to be able to block the nerve here we need to identify certain landmarks as in every branch uh, i mean in every nerve block so for this maxillary nerve which is a branch of the trigeminal nerve is the second branch and exclusively sensory nerve so in this we need to identify certain landmarks the landmarks are interestingly very similar to the posterior superior alveolar nerve block which is very routinely given in this region so you have the same zygomatico maxillary buttress this bony buttress here you have the maxillary tuberosity behind here and between them this mucobuccal fold that you have at the height of the distal aspect of the second molar this region is used as the area of insertion again i would want to uh, tell you as in one of our previous videos that this region if you see the posterior part of the maxilla after the 
zygomaticomaxillary maxillary buttress area you will find that there is a acute bend like the maxilla comes here and after that there is an acute bend this acute bend has to be taken care of when you are inserting your needle at the height of the mucobuccal fold distal to the second molar because if you go straight or if you go straight back there is a chance of finding the pterygoid plexus of veins here which will lead to an intravascular injection so it becomes very important that your needle follows the curvature the natural curvature of bone posterior to the zygomatico maxillary buttress now what do you need to do here is you need to identify your target area that is the needle should reach the pterygomaxillary fissure region and that means that from the point of entry the depth of insertion has to be much more than the posterior superior alveolar nerve block here you will find that the depth of insertion of the needle from the height of the muco mucobuccal fold at the uh, apex of the distal part of the apex of the second molar from there the point of insertion the length of nearly 30 mm should go inside to be able to reach this region so this is a very very significant thing that you know in case you are not able to uh, make the needle reach there you will never have you will have partial anesthesia maybe because the solution will be deposited medially only so you may have partial anesthesia you may have the posterior superior nerve uh, anesthetized but the other important branches of the maxillary nerve which are going to continue after the pterygopalatine ganglia into the floor of the orbit and the nasal and the orbital branches those branches will not be anesthetized if your needle does not reach here properly therefore it's important that we uh, always uh, you know take care that we are inserting sufficiently from the point of insertion to this target area now when you want to go inside well, you really don't enter the entire pterygopalatine ganglion region you just keep the needle at this point right so this should be more than sufficient for your uh, maxillary uh, high tuberosity technique block now if we just want to understand the relevant anatomy of the maxillary nerve further that why are we taking this inside is because what happens to the nerve after its exit from the pterygopalatine fossa or the pterygopalatine ganglion in the fossa is that it will go straight into the floor of the orbit into the infraorbital fissure in the intraorbital fissure it traverses traverses into the infraorbital canal and from here it comes out now during its course inside the canal it will have important branches given one is the zygomatic branch which comes out through the zygomatico facial and the zygomatico uh, temporal foramina here but uh, more important to us uh, dentally is that when you have this nerve block uh, nerve coming through the infra orbital canal it will give two important branches that is to the anterior superior as well as the middle superior alveolar nerves which both supply the uh, you know dental supply to these teeth that is the anterior teeth and the premolar teeth the anterior and the middle superior alveolar respectively so this becomes a very important thing that once you are able to block the nerve in a proximal position here where it's coming out of the pterygopalatine fossa you will realize that at this point you will be blocking all these nerves in one single block so this is one of the advantages of giving this uh, nerve block here and uh, that's the uh, one technique for this now uh, the complications as i said is one is that you may sometimes land up uh, you know hitting the bone here if you're going too posteriorly you may just hit directly on the pterygo the pterygoid plate the lateral pterygoid plate which is not a very good thing to do because then you will have a, a deposition of a local anesthesia outside this region in the infratemporal crest region and not inside so this infratemporal region is not going to take all the solution inside because even though there's some pressure there is medial deposition of the solution but it's preferable to keep the needle here and also in case your needle length is short like if this is a short needle if you try to give the block with this needle you are liable to fail because the total length of this needle is not exceeding 25 mm so you need a needle which is nearly 30 mm to be able to administer this block deep inside there and uh, the other complication that i previously discussed is related to the curvature which is similar to the posterior superior alveolar nerve block that if you don't follow the curvature of this needle so if you're going too medially you may get an obstruction if you're going laterally you may get an obstruction so it's important to go roughly 45 degrees in all angulation and planes and 30 mm insertion and then you curve it so for this again you need the patient to open the mouth less so that you can retract the cheek nicely preferably with a mouth mirror because even your finger will be an hindrance to the path of the needle and the syringe so preferably you use a mouth mirror or a cheek retractor or a tongue depressor the back end of that 
to retract the cheek so that your needle can comfortably be positioned in the desired 45 degree angulation and it can follow the curvature of the posterior lateral aspect of the maxilla. So this is the position of the uh, final nerve block uh, in the high tuberosity technique and you can see how the mirror has been used to its advantage to retract and the needle is bent approximately at 30 to 45 degrees and angulated thereby completing the block and uh, this uh, is one of the techniques. The other technique for uh, blocking the maxillary nerve is the greater palatine foramen approach. The greater palatine foramen as we know lies approximately one centimeter medial or palatal to the uh, palatal gingival margin of the seven and eight that is the second and the third um, uh, maxillary molars. So uh, that is the uh, way you identify this foramen. Now uh, this is relatively less frequently used than the higher tuberosity anesthesia but it also can be easily carried out intraorally. The greater palatine foramen's position once it is located, uh, the best way to locate the position is using a cotton swab or a earbud that can be gradually taken from the uh, you know 5 and 6 that is the premolar molar area and gradually you keep firmly pressing and taking it posteriorly on the palatal mucosa. Uh, and roughly one centimeter medial to the position of the palatal gingival margin of the second and the third molar, you will find that there's a little bit of a dip which happens. And this dip indicates that that is the position of the uh, greater palatine foramina. So uh, the direction of the canal from here, you are looking towards the uh, palatine canal. So the direction of the canal is approximately 45 degrees to the dorsal in relation to the occlusal plane. So uh, some people prefer to bend the needle uh, before they take it inside. Uh, However, that is a uh, choice. You may not choose to bend the needle, but a slight amount of uh, bending usually is required uh, so that you can follow through the uh, entire, uh, you know, palatine canal. Now, when this uh, is supposed to be achieved, there is one very important thing. The uh, one is that the bent needle is carefully inserted into the foramen and by inserting the needle slowly, the entire length of the needle can be used. But sometimes there may be osseous obstructions in this canal. In such situations, Malamed has advised that you withdraw this needle and do not unnecessarily force the needle against a resistance. So if it however goes inside, then there is no problem. After aspiration, uh, one half to one cartridge may be injected, which is, uh, you know, uh, roughly this uh, one cartridge is required even in the high tuberosity technique to complete this block. And the same within two to three minutes of time is required uh, for uh, the uh, anesthesia of the entire maxilla on that side. So it is uh, not very easy to find the entrance into the foramen and uh, moreover inserting uh, the needle roughly can lead to long term damage of the nerve also. So that is the reason why this uh, approach is sometimes avoided by people and uh, they usually prefer the high tuberosity technique. So today we discussed about the maxillary nerve block and the next time we meet we shall be discussing about the mandibular angle fractures. So keep learning, keep growing, see you next time.